Greetings developers. Um, I'd like to do again a video about test-driven development and uh, this time it is about uh, uh, Common Lisp. So if you remember a few months ago I did, um, I did a video uh, about in, in, in Clojure. So we, did the implement, we implemented the Game of Life cutter in Clojure, uh, which is also a Lisp dialect. And uh, since, uh, since then uh, I've discovered more of the Lisp world, so in particular Common Lisp. And, uh, and I'm so impressed, so this is su su such a great stuff uh, in a whole new world I have discovered, which is, which is around for so long and uh, uh, so it's, it's really amazing and, and I like to do more in, in Common Lisp. And so I've, uh, I'd like to do this video today. Uh, we, we will implement again the game of life, um, but in a different approach. So uh, last time the closure, when we did it, when I did it in closure, um, we started in on the inside and built our way up uh, outside to the system boundary, and then we also put a, uh, a visualization on, on top of it uh, using Quill. And um, yeah, and this time uh, uh, we we start from the outside. So a visualization will come in a in a later um, in a uh, in a follow up video using a, a common a common Lisp package called uh, Trivial Game Kit. Um, but we will start, we will start, uh, yeah, we will do it outside in approach, also called London style, which is very common in the, in the Java world or .NET world, where I usually uh, uh, work in, like I, I'm coding in Scala. And I have also some other videos, um, some Scala based videos showing um, this approach. So, so um, outside in means that you start at the system boundary from the outside. So uh, on a use case basis, if you want, and you create integration tests or acceptance tests, uh, which uh, are basically basically your use cases, and you um, and you drill down to uh, to the inner of of the application, and while doing that. You sort out um, uh, the structure and um, and things like that. So we basically have um, an integration test, which uh, in the end will also ensure that um, uh, the the orchestration and uh, and the integration of of the components is uh, is okay. But also each of the components will have uh, unit tests uh, to cover the behavior of of, of them as well. Yeah. So okay. Um, I think we. I'm not sure if we get if we're getting completely done uh, with implementing the game of life. Um, so I thought uh, I take two pomodoros, which is about 50 minutes, um, and see how far we get. So if we're close to getting finished, I will. Uh, I will just finish it. If it's if it still takes a little bit, we will cut it off at uh, at two pomodoros. But but let's see how it goes. Um, yeah, so, all right, let's start the Pomodoro, or, yes, so, here's the Game of Life cutter, um, and basically, what we see here is the specification of the Game of Life cutter, and I would take this upper picture here as our specification of the use cases, okay, so we have four use cases here, and I would uh, I would take them one after one after the other and create integration or, or acceptance tests for the use cases and then uh, uh, go to the inner workings so that those uh, to make those uh, integration tests pass. Okay, so because uh, if we don't have the inner workings, uh, okay, they will not pass because they are real tests against uh, real code. Okay, so let's start with an integration test. We need a new buffer, and I call it uh, IT game. Okay, uh, and then um, I want to use your snippet. Oh no, let's. Uh, I need to enable Lisp mode here in this buffer, and then I need your snippet to create a new test pack to create a new test package. Right. 
So let me increase the font size a little bit. Okay. So the project name is CL Gol. The test package here is called IT Game, I would call it. And our description is uh, integration tests for uh, game of life. So let's have a look at use. So use defines uh, our imports basically. And um, we will have an import for game because game will later be the uh, the uh, the um, yes the executable you you could say so the the entry point to uh, to the application and game will have other collaborators uh, but in this integration test here we will use uh, the game package and another thing uh, so common list has has a number of uh, unit test frameworks and we will be using 5am here so there are a number of uh, uh, frameworks some are um, very simple some are more, more sophisticated and 5am is one of the more sophisticated ones um, and yeah we will see you will see shortly how that works if you are not familiar with uh, unit testing in common lisp so this in keyword we don't need here because this test suit should not be part of another test suit so and this is how we define our tests but let me uh, remove this and we will uh, create a new test in test suit it game tests uh, let me rename this here um, IT game, I want to just call it IT game, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, another thing we should do now probably is to get uh, to get um, auto completion and, and, uh, and stuff like that is to uh, start Sly. So there are two IDEs in Emacs where you can, uh, that help you coding in um, that help you coding in common lisp uh, one is uh, slime it's called slime and the other one is called sly so sly is a little bit newer than slime but it is based on slime so uh, so but it has added a few more uh, features without which are not part of, of slime and I have switched over to sly uh, a while ago, but slime is equally fine if you are used to, to uh, if you are used to that. And I also need to mention that I'm 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 not an uh, common Lisp expert, okay? So I have written my first line of of code using in common Lisp about two months ago, and uh, uh, and unfortunately I don't really have a lot of time to uh, to use it in in on my daily work. So I didn't write a lot of common Lisp code. Um, yep. Yeah, all right. But let's get started. So where do we start? Yeah. So we take this scenario here and turn it into a uh, an integration test. So we say test uh, SC1 for scenario one. Um, um, scenario one. Scenario one. And uh, let me just think for a moment. Uh, yes. So we need now to def we need to define now. So is 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 similar to assert. Is basically is an assert. Okay. So we need to define now how we want to verify that when we have a grid and we put this grid into a function which calculates a next generation grid. Uh, how we compare the expected output of it uh, compared to what we put in. So in order to um, in order to uh, um, to compare uh, deep compare grids or a grid in our case is just a, a vector of vectors or an array of arrays, basically a two-dimensional array. 
we can use equal p. Equal p does a deep, uh, deep compare, deep comparing of um, of of uh, of, of uh, list list structure uh, structures, uh, and maybe not not more than list uh, list list structures, <laughs> but also maps or, or, or some stuff like that. But anyway, I imagine we have a package called game, which we which we import here. Okay, so uh, this is the full name of the package, but it will have a nickname called game. And game will have a next gen function. And I put what I put into this next gen function is a a grid. So I call it test one or let's call it grid one. Okay. And the result of the next gen function is a grid one expected. Um, and if those are equal, then this test will pass. Okay. Now I need to run this test, um, or I need to add code here so that the test is run when 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 uh, this file is evaluated. Now let me store this file. Um, Uh, not here, but here, itgame.lisp. Yes. Okay, so I can now evaluate this buffer by by pressing uh, Control C, Control K, and then uh, Sly will use the REPL um, to evaluate this buffer, to compile this buffer. Okay, and we get an error name uh, the 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 package 5am is not is not known. Um, so we have a dependency here 5am package uh, a, a, a component 5am which is not known. So we have to import or load quick load 5am uh, the package 5am. Okay. Now we can try again to evaluate the buffer, and now it says. Um, uh, see a goal source game this package is not known well that's true this package is indeed not known so we have to create um, uh, a temporary uh, uh, basically an empty uh, a fake package uh, um, for our game code uh, lisp mode Use your snippet to create a new package, and uh, the package is called CLGall Game. Uh, it has no dependencies, at least not right now. We will later have dependencies um, when we implement uh, when when game uses. The collaborators, okay, but we what, but we will see later. So what, but what I have to do is I have to define um, at least this function because otherwise I can't use it in the integration test. Next gen, uh, I want to imp, I want the parameter is a grid, and the result is also a grid. But until until we have a real implementation of this, I want just to return nil, nil, which indicates an empty, a, a fake implementation. Okay, I want this basically to crash, so to speak. Okay, let's save the file um, in this folder game.lisp. Okay, now I can evaluate this file. And it compiles okay. There are uh, there's one warning because the grid variable is um, is not used, but that's okay. I can live with that. We can switch back to our uh, integration test and try to evaluate this again. And now it compiles and I can run it, but the grid variable is unbound. Okay, so we have to define. 
the variables we use here, uh, the, the, glo the, the global uh, variables, uh, that parameter um, grid one, and the grid is, as I said, uh, a vector of vectors. And I, when I look at the first scenario, I can't remember how it looked like. Um, we will have a quick look. Uh, so the first scenario has uh, nine cells and in the middle is a living cell. Okay. And um, um, and looking at And looking at, uh, so I know the, the rules of the game of life already, okay? But, but when we look at the rules down here, which we will implement later uh, as part of, of, of the implementation, I already know that this living cell here will be dead in the next generation, okay? So our expected new grid, which should come out of the next gen function, will look like this, okay? So... Uh, let's evaluate this again and now the test gives us a different uh, failure so it also failed but um, we have a different but um, the next generation function is now actually called okay and it returns nil here which is not what we expect so we expect this but nil is returned and um, so yeah, this is a this is a good thing because it shows us that our integration test uh, works. It uses the next gen function of our game package, and what we need to do now is to implement more of of uh, of the game. So our next step is a level deeper. We go to the game. Uh, we implement basically the, the game wrapper or our or game uh, component. And um, yeah, let's do that. So we have to create a new buffer. So we have added um, the game package, the game production code package, but I need to create a new buffer game test where we create our Um, where we create our new package, test package. Yeah, where we create our test. The test, the unit test for uh, the game, the game component. CLGOL package is game, but it's under uh, the test folder. Um, we import game. Yes. Let's see what else. What else we have here? Description. Um, unit tests for a game. We are not in another game uh, test suit, so we can delete that. Game tests, and here is our test code. Okay. So what I want to do, I want to. I have my buffer with, I want to have mm, my buffer with the game implementation on the right side so that I have test code and uh, production code side by side. Okay, good. Let's make this a little bit bigger. All right, so um, let's start test. Uh, next gen. Next gen tests. Uh, I don't need. I don't need a description for this. What we do here. What we do here is um, so basically, basically we ha we have to carve out now 
how game works. Okay, so so we want to test game, um, but we don't actually know we we don't really know yet uh, how how it works, uh, which components it uses, does it have collaborators, and this kind of stuff. So this is what we this is what we carve out now. So we we kind of um, we kind of define or structure. Um, while we write the test, how game is supposed to work. And I will need to use a little bit of mocking here because I want to mock, I have to mock out the collaborators uh, of, um, of, yeah, of game. So I want to define what game uses and in order to do that I have to mock uh, this, I have to mock those collaborators, okay? Otherwise, my test won't run if it runs against real code uh, or real co collaborators. So um, let me store this file quickly. Tests game dot lisp, and let me evaluate this. Uh, no, don't overwrite this. Let me do this again game.lisp yep now so let me evaluate this and it complains that it doesn't know the cl mock package so we use cl mock here as our mocking framework and it doesn't know that uh, and so we have to also we have to use quick uh, uh, quick lisp quick load uh, cl mock no. CL mock, yes, and it's loaded. So now we should be able to compile this save file. Or one second, I have added some character there on top. Store, compile the file, and now it compiles. Okay. So now I can use um, uh, now I can use uh, no one second. So we have this we have this is this is assert, and what I want to do here is say our game next gen, and we again need uh, need a a grid. Let's call this test grid. Let's call this test grid, and it should return an expected and it should return an expected test grid. And we certainly also do this equal p. Equal p. Yes, okay, and I need to make this a little, little bit smaller here, and this as well, okay, that's fine. And when I run this, it will certainly fail, because first of all, uh, it'll return, it'll, um, uh, so next gen will, uh, first of all, the, the grids are not known, okay, so we have to add the test, the, the grids. Uh, so I want to use a different grid than we have in the integration test because the integration test grid is a little too simple to capture all what's what every to, to capture the the algorithm needed in order to 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 mock out uh, the 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 uh, to mock out the implementation the algorithm of the production code so we need to have more um, um, yeah more variance in in this grid and what we could do is we just take some grid for example let's take the second one okay so we have zero zero one. 
zero, zero, zero. So there are three living cells. There are three living cells and and in the expected output uh, when I look at when I look at the um, at the rules we will have a new living cell so this cell will start to live because it has three living neighbors and a cell a dead cell with three living neighbors will come alive okay so it's uh, it's this rule here uh, um, a living survives a dead cell with exactly three neighbors becomes alive okay so this is we, we so this grid captures a few things um, first of all uh, um, a new cell comes alive and we have a number of neighbors to count Okay, so um, so I think this is uh, this is something we could use, and it should be a good example. Uh, so let's evaluate this again, and it compiles now. So when I run, but when I run the text test, uh, um, it will certainly still fail because yeah, because next next gen returns nil and we expect a result grid we expect this grid um, but a game returns nil okay so what we have to do now is we have to add more expectations so we have to kind of design now how next generation is supposed to, to work okay and uh, so CL mock um, has a uh, a macro called uh, with mocks um, with mocks and I can say something like uh, answer answer and then I have to type I have to type the, so it so uh, it basically um, yeah I have to mock out uh, a, a function call so I have to tell answer if this function is called I want I want you to return this and that so and one of the collaborators of game is is a component called rules okay so I want to I want to have the rules in a separate component and I call that rules and uh, the rules have a, a function called a live p. So I want this function should determine uh, when I give it a, the current state of a cell, the current state, either zero or one, and I give it the number of the number of neighbors, like zero, then. Uh, it has to return a certain value. So kind of, we kind of uh, capture parts of the uh, we we kind of capture parts of the of of the rules already in this mocking here. So in this case, uh, when I call a live p with zero with, so this was the first Pomodoro. All right, let me just continue. So when we uh, when the state is is dead and it has zero neighbors, then the state, the new state will also be dead. Okay, and we have to, what we have to uh, do here is with, with this mocking, we have to look at when we have this grid, which calls to a live P will we probably have? Or not probably, but which calls to a live P will we have? And is this a call we will have? Is there a cell that has no neighbors? Actually, there is not. So all dead cells have at least one neighbor. Okay. So actually, this this will never be called. So this dead cell has one neighbor. This dead cell has three neighbors. This has one neighbor. This has one neighbor. This has two neighbors, and this has also two neighbors. So there there is there's no dead cell that has no neighbors. Okay. So um, we can delete that. Copy this here. And we have dead cells that have two neighbors, 
but the result will still be dead in the so the, so the rule say that says that this cell will stay dead and we have cells with three neighbors where the rules say that this cell will come alive now we also have a number of living cells which we have to capture so we have a living cell here which has two neighbors Yeah, so actually we only have a living cell with two neighbors, right? So there's this living cell has two neighbors, this living cell has two neighbors, and this living cell has also two neighbors. So basically this is all we need for, 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 for uh, to mock out the alive p function. Okay, and what we also can say is that after we have called next generation that we have... Um, that this uh, that this rules a life p function has been called nine times because the alive p function will be called for every cell in this grid and we have nine cells in this grid so the alive p function must be called uh, nine times okay and this is what we can say this is what we can expect after we have called the next generation function so basically um, this cl mock framework will count the invocations uh, of a certain method call which has been mocked okay all right what what we also have is <clears throat> What we also have is a collaborator called grid. So I want, so this grid component, it should, it should be used to do grid, grid uh, operations. Like for example, uh, neighbor count. Okay, so it counts the neighbors. How does it count the neighbors? Um, it basically has to know about the grid. Uh, so I pass it in a grid, which is our test grid. And it has to know uh, the, the the row index and the column index of um, the row and the column index of the cell where it has to determine the neighbors. Okay, so we have to look again at our grid now. So in in uh, uh, so this cell here has one living neighbor and when I say neighbor when I say neighbor I'm, I mean living neighbors okay always living neighbors so this cell has one living neighbor let's go in column 2 or index 1 it is column 2 index 1 uh, this cell has three neighbors Column three or index two has two neighbors. And this neighbor count function of the grid will also be called nine times, but um, it will be called with different with different parameters each time. So it will be called so it will be called for each cell. Okay. So basically I can I have to mock out the calls for each cell. Uh, with different uh, row and column in indices. So the next row um, has one neighbor. Column two in the second row has two neighbors. Column three in the in the second row has also two neighbors. Now let's go to row three, index two. Row three uh, has one neighbor, column two has two neighbors, and column three has also two neighbors. So those are our expectations. And what we also expect is that
that this grid neighbor count function will also be called nine times. So this is our expectations on, on the game. Okay. Let's save this and run this and this will certainly fail. So what's the problem? Read error during compile file package rules does not exist. Uh, yes, that is correct. So we have to create a package called rules. We have to create a package called rules. So we it's already here, right? Package rules does not exist. Okay. So what we have to do, we have to create a buffer, a new buffer rules. Okay. So we have to create a package, um, new package module for rules. Go package rules dependency. Uh, it has no dependencies. In fact, nickname is rules. Export is a live P. And I have to define at least the alive p function. It will have uh, this current state as one parameter and the neighbor count as, as the second parameter. And what I want it to return for now is also nil. So it should not return any useful any, any useful value, I want it to crash, uh, okay? Um, because um, in for our integration test, I want to make sure the integration test is responsible for making sure that a live P has a proper uh, implementation, okay? So let's save this file. Um, it is real code, so I put it in the source package and I call it rules.lisp. Yes. So now we have to evaluate this in turn it uh, so that the REPL or the runtime environment knows about it. Um, then we can switch in this buffer back to our game and we can run the test again. And now it compiles about, uh, it complains about the grid. So it, it doesn't know the grid and we have to do the same about the grid. Okay, so it doesn't know the grid package and we have to do uh, the same for the grid. So what we see now is that we have to uh, we have to we have to put uh, the structures in place already, okay, to make this compile. And a test uh, failure is also uh, a test failure is also when it when it when it fails to compile, okay. Lisp mode. Uh, yeah, snippet new package module CL goal package grid dependencies. It has no dependencies. Uh, nickname is grid, and the function I want to export is um, neighbor count. Good, and I have to at least uh, define the function name. Per count. It has three parameters, I think. So there's a grid, and there's a row index, and a column index. And I also want it to return nil. I want to know when something touches the stuff, and uh, uh, and it should not create any proper values. So let's store this. Uh, grid.lisp yes evaluate and it compiles okay it has three style warnings because none of the parameters are actually in use that's fine let's switch back to our game buffer and let's run the test again and now the tests run um, but it doesn't evaluate so first of all the expected output grid is not what we expect. So 
those are effectively our asserts here. The is state, the is keywords is are basically our, those are our asserts. And um, so the the, the 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 next generation function returns nil, okay, which is obviously not the same as what we expect. And then um, the invocations are also not what we expect. So they are. This is those functions are not being called at all. And uh, and so yeah, those asserts fail. Okay, so we have three failures in this um, test. So what we do now to I want to shorten this a little bit because I have coded coded this already. Now we would need to implement um, the internals of the next generation function. Okay. But I have done this already and uh, I want to just copy it over. Okay, let me just do this. Uh, you copy Yank. Let's have a quick look at it. Um, so the good thing about Common, uh, common Lisp uh, is really that uh, the, the, this REPL, you do developing using the REPL and it's very flexible, it's interactive, it's really great stuff. Um, it, it, so, so basically you can, uh, you can extract this next generation function or I have extracted into two other components. So basically this map um, goes through the rows and creates a new row. So basically this map creates a new grid, okay? So this, this, uh, this anonymous function, this lambda, creates a new grid. And there's a new, new row function, which in fact creates the grid, okay? So I have extracted a new row function uh, which creates a new grid and this new row function has uh, has further extracted the, a new cell so there's a function new cell which eventually which finally uses the rules and the grid uh, functions to generate a new cell and this is just uh, this is just collected basically uh, into a new grid so the output of the next generation function is a new grid Okay, and um, yeah, let me store this and compile it, and it compiles. So this is great. Uh, but now we can reevaluate our test, and um, let me check what it what it does here. So, uh, did we do something wrong here? Game, let me check quickly what has happened here. Uh, so there's one component which returns nil. Test grid expected. Test grid expected. This is what we expect. So this is our test grid expected, and it does not equal to this here. Yeah, there's a nil in there. So how does that get in there? So it seems we have missed a. It seems we have missed a case in our uh, in our mocking. Okay, so something is not working here yet. I know that, um, so th those arrows pop up while you develop your production code, okay? And you see, according to the mocking, that uh, that there is a fun that a live P was being called and it returned a nil. So, uh, and um, so we must have missed uh, a case here. No. There has been an additional call to a live p, which has not been mocked, and so the real live p function was called, which returns null, uh, which 
still returns nil. So our implementation of a live B returns nil. And I wanted it to return nil in order for me to show to, to see uh, to see that it that it that we have something missing. Okay. Uh, equal so invocations is uh, invocations returns I don't know what invocations return I think it returns some kind of list where the invocations are listed and I need to uh, let me give the length of it okay so invocations length e should equal 9 and also here invocations length should equal nine. Yes, so I, I have missed that. Okay, let me check again now. And now it says, okay, so two tests pass, but there is still a nil here. So I think I found it. There is a there is an error in in the mocking. So this line here, I have a three, which should be a two. So there is no index three, okay? Uh, which means that uh, here, a live P, um, A live p was called with a wrong number of uh, of neighbors, which is undefined. Okay, so it returned nil. And um, when I save this now and run it, now all my tests pass. Um, okay, so let's continue. I think that the 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 algorithm is okay. We have developed it okay. So we have to make sure that. Um, but we see that. Um, Every little mistake here uh, has some some impact on our test result, which is a good thing because we have to closely look at it and see why it fails and where. Okay. Um, so I think <clears throat> we should now, after this game test passes, um, actually we could make here. This is since we comparing numbers. We can always also use uh, this here. This is a little bit more efficient, but just a minor refactoring. Let's run this test again to make sure. Yes, and it still passes. So after developing this, we could go back to our um, uh, integration test and see um, in how far this works. Did I make a change in here? No. Did I, did I make a change in the integration test? Anyway, let's run it again. So, okay. So it still does not work, certainly not. It, it cannot work, okay? Because right now we only have implemented the game, which is based on a unit test, which mocks out the rules alive and, and grid neighbor count functions. Okay, so this won't work because the integration test uses uses the real code, so real alive p and real neighbor count, and hence um, it certainly fails still. So um, let me switch over to our rules. So the next thing we want to implement is um, the rules, okay? And we create a new buffer for rules test. Uh, rules test. Um, Lisp mode, yeah, snippet, new 5am test package. Um, CL goal package rules. Um, unit tests for rules. And that's about it. There is no in. Okay, good. So, um, test a live p test. So now we have to look at our rules. 
So let's start with the first rule. So we take the rules as they are, okay? This is specification and we take the rules as they are. A living cell with less than um, two neighbors dies. A living cell with less than two neighbors dies. So let's have a look. Is um, equal rules uh, alive p a living cell so it, the state should be one for living with less than two neighbors so less than two neighbors is one uh, should die so the result of this should be zero okay run uh, our life test okay let's save this file under tests yes rules dot lisp okay and we can evaluate this now by control c control k and here's our error um, so <clears throat> Uh, so the equal sign uh, compares uh, numbers with numbers, um, okay? And since we return nil, uh, nil is not a number, and so this error message. So wh what we can do is just return zero, okay? So this is a quick implementation. Return zero and, uh, and uh, yeah, it compiles. Let's run the test again, and the test passes. Okay, so this satisfies um, this uh, test case. We can also add another test case. So smaller than two, zero is also smaller than two. And there could be cases where, where a living cell has no neighbors, no direct neighbors. Okay, so let's store, evaluate, and this test also passes. So let's look at our own rules again. A living cell with two or three neighbors survives. So now we have um, now we have our rules. We have two neighbors, and for two neighbors, the cell should continue to live. And this test will now probably fail. Uh, yes, it does. Um, a live p test. So this test evaluated. So one evaluated to one which is not zero, okay? Because we return zero, um, but we expect one. So this certainly fails. Um, I think we have to have now some kind of uh, distinguishing what we return based on something, on, on some input parameters, okay? So we can use cond. Um, and uh, we could look at the state if if the state is one, and and the neighbor count and the neighbor count is two, then count should return one. Right, and otherwise it should return zero. Let's evaluate this. It compiles. Let's run the test. Yes, and this test passes. Okay, so our let's add another case. Um, so a living cell with two or three neighbors should continue to live. And this test fails um, because we only check for two neighbors, but we can certainly also check for or that the, if the neighbors are are three. Okay. Um, if the neighbors are three. 
see if uh, is there a parenthesis missing. Yes, I hope I have it in the right place. Mm, nope. Let's run the test again. And now it passes. Okay, so let's add cases. Mm, so the third rule here is a living cell with more than three neighbors dies. Um, so let's take four. Four is larger than three and the, re and the, the result should be um, B0, which is the case, because it goes into this handler. Uh, and the last case is, uh, we can also add another, we can, we can also add more, but it doesn't matter because it will all, always go into this handler here. Uh, because this state, this, um, this is simply not true. Okay. Because it, uh, it only handles neighbors of two and three. So I think this is fine. Uh, so the last rule is a dead cell with exactly three neighbors becomes alive. Okay, so let's add this, add this last rule. Uh, a dead cell with exactly three neighbors becomes alive. So in this test fails. And I think we have to have a, a, a new state here. And when the state is, when the current state is um, zero and the neighbor count is three, then I want the cell to come alive. Yes, and in all other cases, it should return. Uh, it should return. Uh, zero. Let's run the test again and it passes now. Okay. So we can effectively add more, um, add more cases here, but it doesn't make a difference because there are, we have covered all cases in this, in this, uh, in this implementation. We have covered all, all cases in this implementation. Yes. Um, so yeah, let's go back to our integration test. Let's run the integration test again and see what it does. So it still fails because um, because what happens now is that uh, a live p returns now a, a real value, something other than something other than uh, nil. And um, and somewhere there's a number, and somewhere there's so there's so, but it doesn't really work yet. Okay, which is good because it shouldn't really work yet until we have uh, implemented uh, the grid. Okay, so let's go to the grid. Yes, let's go to the grid and add the implementation for the grid. So what we also need is a new buffer for a grid test. Grid test. And we need a list mode and we need a new test, new 5am test package. So the project is CLGOL, uh, the package is grid, description, unit tests for grid, and we don't have an in. Yep. So, um, uh, so we can, so we, we can use for, to, to test the grid, we can, um, We can we can go through a number of grids basically. We have to pass in a grid to the to to the neighbor count function. Okay, so we need we need a grid here, 
and um, we can basically it, it's just to it just does count the neighbors so we can use Uh, count one um, uh, grid neighbor count and then we need some test grid uh, grid one and we need uh, row index and column index and then we want um, we expect uh, the numbers, uh, the, 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 the neighbors to be counted, which is, um, I don't know, let's add a grid. Dev parameter grid one, uh, just a simple one, basically uh, zero, one, one, zero, or one, one, okay. Just a, just, just such a simple grid. So if we look at the position one one, it has three neighbors. So it should result in three neighbors. Okay. And yep. Run count one. Let's. Save this file. This is a test lisp uh, grid lisp. Let's evaluate this. I know there is a problem. There's a missing parenthesis. So okay. So we return nil, and um, uh, so we return nil, but we expect uh, we're comparing a number here. Okay, so this obviously doesn't work. So to shorten this a little bit, <clears throat> uh, so we we add more we can add more ca cases here for for this for the script. Okay, so uh, let's say on this position I have two neighbors. Um, on this position I have also two neighbors, and on this position I have also two neighbors. Yes. So this will certainly still fail. So to shorten this a little bit, uh, you certain we certainly have to add now some implementation here, okay? And uh, which operates on the real grid and counts the numbers. And I have done this already, so let me just put this in. Um, copy. Yank. So let's quickly go through it. Um, I have a, 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 a utility function called get field value, which takes the grid, the row index and the column index, and um, um, so it makes some checks that we are not outside of the grid, where we just return zero, and then we use a ref to reference to, to get to pull the, the value out of this two-dimensional grid okay so that's all it does and then we have we use reduce to um, well and in fact the field value is either a zero or one okay and which helps us to determine the number of neighbors because if field value returns one we can calculate. Uh, we can calculate sum up uh, all field values of of the grid, except except the um, yeah. We can sum them up basically, and this will give us the number of um, the number of neighbors. Okay, so uh, let me. Let me store this. Let me store this and evaluate it. Okay, and now we can run the test, and the test passes. Um, so we we could add more example grids here, um, like 
more sophisticated grids to really stress test uh, the implementation we have but I want to keep it at that and um, but I would usually do more grids but time is tight at the moment uh, because I, it shouldn't be too long this video anyway let's go back so our last step in this now is to go back to our integration test again um, and run it and it passes now okay so the integration test passes and um, which means that we now have real implementation and one of the use cases is already working so what we what I would like to do now is uh, to add a second scenario from the scenarios we, we had on the web page okay so let me just quickly do this um, so we have a grid 2, an expected grid 2. Uh, and the, the, the second grid, we just take this one here. Um, yes, the Pomodoro is now over. Uh, just let me quickly finish this. Um, so we take this grid. I think this is the same grid we have in the in the game in the game test. So we have uh, we have those are living and the result should be like this. Okay. Um, save run and this test passes as well. So we could actually yeah come on. Let's add a third one to really make sure that uh, the scenario works. <sighs> Company, um, I need to work on the configuration of company because uh, it pops up in situations where you can't really, where you don't really want, want it. <laughs> um, so this is grid three, grid three. So grid three has those are living. So those are living. Those are living. Yes. And now we have to look at um, in the result grid which one come alive and which one will die. So let's quickly go through it. Uh, this will stay dead, this will stay dead, this will stay dead. This will has three neighbors, so it will come alive. This one has one, two, three, four neighbors, so it will actually die. This one has three neighbors, so it will come alive. This one has two neighbors, it will stay alive. This one has four neighbors it will die this one has one two three neighbors it will come alive so this should be this should be the result grid of this that scenario let's have a look and it passes as well so chances are very good as I said in the beginning that uh, once we have the second scenario covered with the integration test and it's working that the rest will work as well and I am pretty sure the, the, the fourth one will work as well so, uh, to, to recapture, um, uh, we have started with integration tests uh, on, a, on a use case basis, we call them scenarios here, and to drill down uh, to, through the, the game, which is, which, is a, um, which is a layer that has collaborators, uh, drill down to, to, to the collaborators and, and used um, uh, uh, mocking partly as in game uh, to carve out what really is needed to carve out the, a little bit of the design of, of, of the of, of, uh, of the application but basically use a unit testing on those in those areas to implement uh, the algorithms and the production code okay and um, yeah I hope you learned something and um, 
the next video I would like to to take the code that we have implemented here and put a visualization on to, on, to, on on top of it on top of it uh, also using common Lisp and I will uh, make uh, another video of this so okay goodbye.